L'Hopital's rule is what allows us to evaluate limits of indeterminate form of this and this. These are the two main ones here. You know, whenever you see these, you can just do L'Hopital's rule straight up. But those aren't the only two uh, indeterminate forms. We also have these five things here. And L'Hopital's rule can be used to determine limits of this type also, but in an indirect way. Uh, if you see one of these, all right, how it generally goes is any limit that's like this can be turned into a limit that's like that. And any limit that's like this can be turned into one of these to which L'Hopital's rule can be directly applied. The outlier is the infinity minus infinity one, and that's kind of a different story all together. That takes a little bit of uh, algebraic manipulation. But what I'm going to do is a couple of examples of how evaluating these types of limits works with L'Hopital's rule. For example here, limit as x goes to 0 of x squared go 10x. <clears throat> you try to plug in 0, you get uh, 0 times, well the tan of 0 is 0, so the cotan of 0 is infinity. So this is of type 0 times infinity. How do you handle that? You can't apply the rule directly, so you have to do a trick. W what you do is you just rewrite this as a division problem. You rewrite it as cotan x divided by 1 over x squared. And now, because you had 0 times infinity, when you flip one of them, you're automatically going to have uh, either 0 or over 0 or infinity over infinity with this kind of a situation. So in here, when you try to do it again, x goes to 0, it turns out we have um, infinity over infinity. So we can just apply L'Hopital's rule directly. And so the derivative of cotan x is um, minus cosecant squared x. Divided by the derivative of this is like x to the minus 2. The derivative of this is minus 2x to the minus 3. And so the worst part about doing these is really just the algebra involved. Because uh, we got a lot of stuff out here that we have to simplify. Uh, so we're going to retake the limit, x goes to 0. We can rewrite this nicely by bringing uh, these x's up top and the cosecant square. Well, that'll come on the bottom as a uh, sine squared. So what you're really looking at is 1 half x cubed divided by sine squared x, uh, limit as x goes to 0. And you can separate this out in the usual way. All right, this will be 1 half times the limit as x goes to 0. Of, uh, if you sequester out the x there, you'll have x times x squared or sine squared x. And this limit is easy to do as x approaches 0. This goes to 1, this goes to 0, uh, so 0 times 1 is 0. And so the final answer, got in that way, looked out rule, gives you 0. All right, this is one of the strange ones here. If you try to plug in infinity, you go with a really large number, what do you wind up with? Well, you'll have uh, 1 to the infinity, and so that's indeterminate of type that. Um, you can see why it's called indeterminate, because you have two conflicting forces on the value of the, um, of the function, right? Your uh, base wants to drive it to 1, but the exponent wants to drive it to infinity. What's it going to end up being? Now, this is how you proceed with all these exponential ones. Uh, typically, you call it y. Call it some other variable y. So y equals 1 uh, minus 1 over x to the x. And then what you do is you log both sides. L and y equals, now when you take the logarithm of this side, uh, the x is going to pull out front with the properties of logs. So what you wind up with is x times ln minus 1 over x. And now well, what you've done is if you try to retake that limit as x goes to infinity, this side, this side stays as ln y, but this is going to go to infinity times ln of 1 is 0. So we've taken this and we've turned it into an infinity times zero in determinate form. We can work with these by doing that trick with the division. So we just have to rewrite this now. Okay? We can rewrite the multiplication by x as division by 1 over x. Right. So now, as x approaches infinity, we have 0 over 0, and we can apply the rule directly to that all while just ignoring what's happening over here. Really, what we're doing is we're taking the limit as x goes to infinity of both sides of this. 
but this is just going to stay L and Y for the duration because there's no X's in here, all the X's are over, over here. So when you carry that out, doing L'Hopital's rule says that this limit is equal to uh, 1 divided by uh, 1 minus 1 over X times the derivative of the inside, which is, this is like X to the minus 1, which differentiates to, sorry, minus X to the minus 1, which differentiates to X to the minus 2, so 1 over X squared divided by, this will go to minus 1 over x squared. And then you try to clean that up as best you can. We'll get cancellation here and here. And the whole thing will wind up leading you with, uh, when you put that negative in, you'll have 1 divided by 1 over x minus 1 equals, uh, or the limit as x goes to infinity, equals the limit as x goes to infinity of L and Y. And now as x goes to infinity, this thing, this will vanish. And the number that you're going to be left with over here is minus 1. So ultimately, you'll have ln y equals minus 1. But the original thing you had called y. So the final step is to exponentiate both sides. And you get the limit as x approaches infinity of y equals e to the minus 1. So that's going to be the, the power of e, and that limit is e to the minus 1. Next example. Very similar. Uh, as x approaches 1 from the right, uh, you try to plug in 1, and you'll get 0 um, to the 0. That's 0, 0 in the determinant. What does 0 over 0 mean? Could be anything. So. Uh, L'Hopital's rule, but you got to go through that process first. So it's one of the e exponential ones. We have to call it a variable, call it y, and uh, the y is x minus 1 uh, to the ln x. When you naturalize both sides of this, you have the ln y equals, and then with properties of logs, when you log the whole thing, this log is going to pull out front as ln x times ln of x minus 1. And we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity here. So that's going to be 0, right? The ln of 1 is 0 times the ln of 0, which is minus infinity. So this is of the form, again, 0 times minus infinity. And we have to play around with this. So turn the multiplication into a division so we can apply the rule directly. So uh, just do that up. ln x minus 1, 1 over ln x. And now you have... Uh, as x approaches 1, you have your uh, uh, minus infinity over minus infinity, to which we can apply L'Hopital's rule directly. And so to do that, this will be, so the limit of this over this is equal to uh, 1 over x minus 1 divided by, the derivative of this is minus 1 over ln squared x times 1 over x. And let's clean that up a bit so we can work with it. Uh, I'll cancel this negative by switching the sign of this. And that'll bring all these terms up top. So that what I'll wind up with is x ln squared x over um, 1 minus x. I switch that sign. And then you try to reevaluate the limit from here as x goes to 1 uh, from the plus, from the right. And you try to do it again. And what do you get? you get 0 over 0 when you try to plug in 1. So it didn't work, so we have to do a little of the rule one more time. Uh, so differentiate to the top, need the product rule, so that will be f prime g, ln squared x, uh, plus g prime, which is 2 ln x times 1 over x, times f, the x, all divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is uh, minus 1. And then you free do it again, limit as x goes to 1 from the right. And as you plug in 1 for here, these x's cancel. The ln of 1 is 0, plus 2 times the ln of 1, which is also 0. So this whole thing, then it goes to 0. Not done yet, there's one more, there's one more step. Uh, the original thing was y. So it was, we have ln y equals 0 after we took the limit. Final step, exponentiate both sides. So you get uh, y equals e to the 0, and the final limit is 1.